All right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> this is the second part of this discussion. And this has to do with the part about Number one, the elections. I don't know why we keep going back to the elections and with the 60 court cases that got thrown out, including this one, which is the Supreme Court case where Texas brought a lawsuit along with, I think, a few other southern states, red states, against the four battleground states that uh, had to do the recounts and Trump barely lost. And the discussion was... Uh, why did the Supreme Court refuse to hear it? And uh, Valdez said it's because John Roberts didn't like uh, Trump. And he thought that it should have been heard. And the reason that the Supreme Court didn't hear it, which is what Roberts said, and basically the most of the other judges agreed, is that, that they didn't have any standing. And we went back and forth and... I just said one thing, I said states' rights. Texas has no business interfering in another state's election. And so this is part one of the of the argument. This is uh, coming from uh, the Texas Tribune on uh, 20, 2012-11, in other words, December 11th, 2020, right after the, uh, I think it was after the 10th that the uh, Supreme Court refused to hear Texas's lawsuit. U.S. Supreme Court throws out Texas lawsuit contesting 2020 elections results in four battleground states. The lawsuit challenged election results in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. The high court said Texas did not have standing to bring the case. Texas has not demonstrated a judicially cognizable, cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections, the U.S. Supreme Court wrote in an unsigned ruling Friday evening, briskly rejecting a long shot, get this, let me underline this, let me highlight this, brisking, briskly rejecting a long shot high stake case, notice the, the word long shot, Texas lawsuit that had become a vehicle for Republicans across the country to contest President-elect Joe Biden's victory. In a few brief sentences, the high court said it would not consider the case for procedural reasons because Texas lacks standing to bring it. Texas has not demonstrated a judicially cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections, the, the court wrote in an unsigned ruling Friday evening. With electoral college deadlines rapidly approaching, the ruling likely ends President President Donald Trump's bid to overturn the election results through the courts. Texas sued this week to challenge the election results in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin on the basis that those states implemented pandemic related changes to election procedures that Texas claimed were illegal and cast question into the election results. Those battleground states shot back in harsh reply briefs that Texas had no business challenging the election protocols of other states. States' rights. Legal experts warned if, if, if Texas succeeded, the case would set a dangerous precedent of allowing states to intervene in one another's affairs and allowing courts to overturn settled certified election results. Let's be clear, attorneys for Pennsylvania wrote in the state's reply brief, Texas invites the court to overthrow the votes of a the American people and choose the next president of the United States. That Faustian invitation must be firmly rejected. Texas's lawsuit leaned heavily on the discredited claims of election fraud in swing states. Election officials and the U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr, people forget about him, have said there is no evidence of election fraud on a scale that would have swayed the results. The lawsuit quickly grew into a dividing line for a blue in red states across the country, and for Republicans, a test of loyalty to Trump. Some Republican-led states refused to side with Trump in the case. Idaho Attorney General Lawrence Watson said the legal, legally correct decision may not be the politically convenient decision, but more Republican states chose to join. Trump and Republicans across the country have pinned their hopes on the Texas suit, with Trump himself intervening.
In a series of tweets, the president called it the big one and later added, it's very strong, all criteria met. By Thursday, he had drawn the involvement of nearly every state with more than a dozen weighing in on each side, as well as the endorsement of a, more than 100 members of the U.S. House, including more than a dozen Texas Republicans. If the court had heard the case, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz would have argued it at the request of Trump. But the U.S. Senator John Corrin, a former Texas Attorney General and Texas Supreme Court Justice, said he was not convinced by the logic of the case. Court watchers said from the start that the case was a long shot. Get that, a long shot. Trump has indicated that he hoped the high court, which now includes three justices he appointed, would turn the election his way. But the justices have shown no interest in doing so. Earlier this week, the court tossed a similar case from the Pennsylvania Republicans attempted, attempting to challenge Biden's win in that battleground state. Justices Alito and Clarence Thomas indicated they would have allowed Texas to bring the case, but said they would not grant other relief. None of Trump's appointees indicated they saw, it, saw any merit in the lawsuit. In a series of tweets after the ruling, Trump raged against the decision, which he called dis a disgraceful miscarriage of justice. The Supreme Court let us down. No wisdom, no courage. Donald J. Trump. Legal experts called the lawsuit dangerous and unprecedented in its aim. Garbage, but dangerous garbage. That's how election law expert Rick Hansen put it. U.S. Rep US Representative Chip Roy, a Texas Republican, once served as Texas Attorney General Jim Paxson's top deputy, called the case a dangerous violation of federalism that will almost certainly fail. And it did. The case was a Hail Mary play for Trump, who hoped the court would hand him a victory that the voters did not. His campaign has filed dozens of lawsuits across the country in an overwhelmingly unsuccessful bid to overturn the election. But the case carried high stakes too for Paxton, who filed it at a nadir in his two decade roller coaster of a political career. Paxton found himself back in the spotlight and at the center of the conservative media ecosystem. This week, to tout his pro Trump efforts, even as the FBI served a subpoena to the Texas Attorney General's office as part of a probe to, into his alleged criminal activity, according to Austin American statesman. Eight senior aides told authorities they believe Paxton broke the law in using the agency to do favors for a political donor, Nate Paul. Well, he's in trouble. Anyway, that is part one. In other words, he tried to violate states' rights by trying to bring a lawsuit to overturn the way uh, these states handle their elections. And it didn't work. It didn't get overturned. And the thing is, is that they, they disagree, we disagree, on whether it should have been heard or not. And the next piece of evidence that you're going to see is very surprising. Sometimes when we ask a question and you actually go looking for it, the universe actually opens up and gives you what you asked for. Now, it would have been funny if I'd gone back and forth uh, showing article after article about uh, Paxton uh, raising this lawsuit and the merits of the lawsuit, right? It's in using other people to actually argue it. But sometimes people defeat their own argument, which is something that I love. Uh, using people's own argument against them. And they're the best person to actually end and squash all the beef and then all the arguments, right? It's what I love. Guess what happened? You won't guess. I guess you will because you're going to get a, a, a chance to know it now. A.G. Paxton, who tried to overturn 2020 election, blast new voting rights bill. Hmm. This is from the Houston Chronicle, a Texas newspaper. Not CNN, not MSNBC. Not, not the BBC or the New York Times, the Houston Chronicle from Texas. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton on Friday condemned the voting rights bill that the U.S. House passed this week, saying the issue should be left, saying the issue should be left to the states and calling it one of the worst pieces of legislation, maybe the worst I've ever seen. 
Paxton in December tried to overturn the election results for four battleground states where President Joe Biden had won because he took issue with those states' election practices. The case was almost immediately tossed by the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled that Texas did not have standing to challenge election in other states. Our founding fathers intentionally excluded Congress and gave the legislators the authority, the state legislator, gave the state legislature authority to run elections. Instead, this act flips the Constitution's script and empowers the federal government to act as an election regulator for states. Get that. Talk about a hypocrite. Democrats were quick to point out the conflict between Paxton's lawsuit and his stake and his take on the new federal legislation. It's ironic that Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is pushing states' rights. See what I said? Pushing states' rights when he wasted tax Texans taxpayer dollars to attempt to overturn the results of elections in in four states. Said Democratic Party Chair Gilberto Hinosa. There is no rhyme or reason with Paxton. The only thing we know about Paxton is he will disenfranchise millions of voters through his frivolous attempts to overthrow an election or through opposing common sense reforms like HR1. There you have it. What did he say? Our founding fathers intentionally excluded Congress and gave state legislatures the authority to run elections. So in other words, each state has the power to run their elections the way that they want to. Point blank, period. I love it when people kill their own argument. Because he was just saying that uh, if it was election fraud, Texas had a right to sue Pennsylvania or Florida or Georgia. Can't make this stuff up, folks. Can't make